What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back and it's time to break down early look at uh, week 5's NFL DFS slate. Got a decent one here, 12 gamer. Um, we've got a couple teams on by this week. And so, I think this is, maybe this is the last week we have um, a quote-unquote full main slate. I think they start dropping down to 10 and 11 games for a little while. Uh, might be another week after this still, but uh, nonetheless, let us ha get into this breakdown into the early week here. So at the very top, we've got Big Ben, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Jared Goff, Cam Newton, Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes and Marcus Mariota pretty much can X out a bunch of these people from this list. I'm going to X out Rodgers. I don't like his health right now. Um, once he shows to me that he's a little bit healthier, I'll be willing to play him. Goff, um, I think they just blow Seattle out, so I don't think there's much reason to play him. Uh, Big Ben at 6,900, I just don't think it's worth paying all the way up to him. Uh, I do like Rivers and Ryan on the top end with Cam. Uh, Cam always with that nice rushing floor at home. Um, I do like Cam at 6,400. Pat Mahomes at 6,200. I was going to like him earlier in the week for sneaky upside uh, against with a 50-team total, but it seems like people are going to play him, and he's going to be his normal percentage owned, so I probably won't play any Pat Mahomes against that Jags defense. I like Mariota. Uh, 6100 is a little bit more expensive than I would like. He's only 58, or, or he's only 68 on FanDuel, um, which is way below the norm over there. So I think he's viable over there. Kirk Cousins, that defensive Philly is terrible. Uh, I do like him. I like Dalton again. Multiple TD passes in three out of four games. Um, no one wins. Keenum has just looked terrible. I'm just not going to play him. Stafford is interesting against the Green Bay defense, 5,700. Blake Bortles at 5,500 is interesting at well, as well. I think this week with Carr down here and Russ at 52 and 5,100, I think there is merit to just building your lineup and then fitting who you like. Like if I want a cheap one, I'll go Russell Wilson or Derek Carr. If I want a mid-tier one, I'll go Bortles or Stafford. If I want to pay up, I'll go to Cam, Rivers, or Ryan. So we'll get into the rest of the lineup, and we'll go from there. So at tight end, we don't have the plug-and-play that is Eric Eber on it anymore. Uh, so we've got a look, and I believe there's only two options for me. Vance McDonald against Atlanta. I don't love it uh, because of the target share, but Atlanta gives up a lot of targets over the middle. And so, if he's going to get five targets each week, I like me a little Vance McDonald. Also, David Njoku, he's interesting, but uh, he's just not getting depth of targets. Last game was his best with 52 yards, but he's still not getting lengthy targets, and so that concerns me. Um, if you want to go way down here, you can look at a GPP flyer on Antonio Gates or... You can take the old 2,500 flyer on. I got to find him. Where is he? On uh, Nick Vanette. So Will Disley is on IR. So the Seattle tight ends. We'll select. Let's see here. Seattle. Select that game. You can see Seattle's got only two options. Tyler Ott and Nick Vanette. Uh, Vanette seen targets through the first two weeks, um, five, five, two, two, um, and now with Will Disley out, it should be interesting to see Nick Vanette. So we're going to pop Nick Vanette in for now. Um, I don't love the other options at tight end. Like if I'm playing anyone else, it's McDonald, it's Vance McDonald over in Joku, but, uh, Nick Vanette for 2,500 on a week where we could use some salary is, is interesting. Like always, guys, this isn't the end-all, be-all lineup. This isn't necessarily... It's a Wednesday, guys. This isn't the lineup that I'm going to play on Sunday. Don't play this lineup on Sunday unless you want to throw it in a GPP for the heck of it. Moving on to defense, I think... I think it's another week you're able to pay down. I don't hate the Falcons at 2K. Just eat the 2K defense and hope they don't get you negative. Um, I don't think there's any merit to paying up. If the Titans were not 4K, I would play them, but they're 4K, so I'm not playing them. 
I think you just take the Browns. They've been an aggressive defense, uh, and so I think you just take the 2500 take the salary savers, and plug them in. Uh, moving on, we'll go to running back next. We'll go to key position. At the top, you got Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon and Christian McCaffrey. I think they're the clear three top pay-up options, 8K and above. Um, it's kind of going to come down to what you what you want. Do you want McCaffrey? Do you do you think that uh, he'll have a single a, a similar game to what Kamara was able to do against the Giants? Do you want Melvin Gordon and his potential, you know, multi catch, high catch upside and high rushing upside with really high touchdown equity, five touchdowns already this season in four games. I really do like his touchdown equity. Uh, and he's probably my favorite. I think Seattle gets blown out by um, the Rams. And for $800, I think I take the saving on Melvin Gordon over Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley's a little bit more stable. Um, he has six touchdowns through three weeks. So just, or for through four weeks, just as high of a touchdown equity as Melvin Gordon. Uh, but I think I take the savings with Melvin Gordon. But for now, we'll hold off. So the big news that we need to keep an eye on is Mixon and Freeman. It looks like Freeman is going to be able uh, to play this weekend. So it takes us off of the potential Tevin Coleman at 6,400. Joe Mixon also expects to return to play. And so I'm going to assume at this point we won't have Tevin Coleman or Gio Bernard. That brings us down to good old TJ Yeldon at 5,600. So Leonard Fournette is out, and TJ Yeldon steps up. Uh, he'll need touchdowns to get to the value uh, last week without Fournette. Um, was an interesting game for him. He got in the end zone twice. He's going to need more of this, the six receptions type game, um, to hit value. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be tough for him to get there, I think. Um, but, I, but I think it's potential. He saw 75% of the running back shares. And so, for now, early in the week, TJ Yeldon at 5,600. More options at running back down in this range. Jay Ajayi at 5,100. Tough matchup against Minnesota, but did see a decent share at rushing. Um, Frank Gore is outstapping Kenyon Drake, just as, you know, something to keep in mind. So don't play Kenyon Drake until that changes. Rolls Royce at 4,200 is interesting. He got into the end zone last week. He's gotten to the end zone in three straight weeks, but uh, last week um, had a really good game with his average uh, at 8.4. It's going to be interesting. He's not getting an insane amount of touches, which worries me, uh, and so it probably keeps me from playing him. Um, Ty Montgomery, if Geronimo Allison and Randall Cobb said, I think Ty Montgomery is interesting. I'd assume they'll split them out a lot um, in those sets. Nick Chubb, interesting at 38, probably more GPP. Corey Grant, GPP option. Um, Rashad Penny is interesting. So Seattle, we'll go back to the old Seattle group of running backs. So if Chris Carson is out again, um, Mike Davis saw uh, 21 rushes in week four. And so I lean to believe that if he's out again, he will see that again. Rashad Penny saw nine of the carries and had a nice game. Um, it's against the Rams, so it's kind of tough. Chris Carson is interesting if he gives it a go, if he can go at full pace. Uh, he's an interesting play all the way down here at 4,100. I don't think we need to go there in cash games, but he's an interesting play. So we have one running back in. You guys know I like to play my running backs at the flex, so let's just put Yeldon in the flex for now. TJ Yeldon in the flex. Back to running backs. And I think the other running back, I think you got to play him this week. It's San Francisco, and it's David Johnson, 6,300. He finally got involved last week. He fumbled. But if he doesn't fumble, he eclipses 20 points. They rushed him 22 times. They gave him three targets, or three receptions, four targets. And I think it goes up against San, against San Francisco. San Francisco, not a good team. I think David Johnson has a nice shot at the 1,000 yards. And for 6,300, I'm willing to t I'm willing to try to trust the Arizona Cardinals. Ah, coaching staff. I hate saying it, but uh, I'm willing to trust them. I think on your final running back spot, once again, it's going to come down to salary. I do like James Conner. I think it's a good bounce back spot. 
but I uh, I am concerned about just his overall the overall James Conner experience that we're getting right now. He's not even getting double. He's only seen double digit rushes in two games. Um, he's seeing a nice volume of targets, but five receptions for 30 yards is not carrying you to cash. He's going to have to get in the end zone against Atlanta at 7,500. He needs 24 points ish is what I want on my running backs. If I'm paying up at running back, I want a more than three X because it means I'm sacrificing in another position and I'm not banking on Nick Vanette to get me three X. That's, that's just how it is. We'll move on to running back. We'll come or we'll move on to wide receiver. We'll come back to that when we have a more clear idea of our pricing remaining. So we've got Antonio Brown and Julio Jones up at the top. Top two options on the slate should be a shootout in Pittsburgh. Both defenses have been just absolutely atrocious. Uh, Julio is my favorite play, uh, especially on DraftKings. I think he gets peppered with targets again. Uh, one of my favorite plays. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, I really like him. I think I'd take the $1,600 discount. Um, I'm sure the Falcons will shade towards Antonio Brown, leaving it open a little bit more for Juju. Um, and Juju's targets through the first four games are ridiculous. 11, 11, 19, 8. While he only caught four receptions against um, the Ravens, still had the 11 targets. Uh, had a long of 38. He's having long receptions, which is huge. Has not found the end zone all that much. I really do like me some Juju Smith-Schuster. I love me some Adam Thielen, and I love this. 12, 19, 13, 12. Look at those targets. 100 yards in every game. Price is fair. You beat Philly with receivers. Um, Stefan Diggs should regard garner most of the safety help. Adam Thielen running in the slot should be open a lot. I do love me some Thielen as well. Um, then you got to step down a ways. I like myself some Golden Tate at 6,700 if you can't get up to the upper tier. Corey Davis at 64 just seems overpriced. Ridley is still only seeing about 50% of the snaps. I mean, I just can't play Calvin Ridley at 5,800. Uh, Tyler Boyd at 5,700 is interesting. Xavier Howard should get A.J. Green, which leaves Tyler Boyd kind of by himself against some mediocre to bad corners. Uh, Shepard not playing, not chasing the Shepard. Anunua went up in price. Don't really want to play him. Geronimo Allison also went up in price. Don't really want to play him or Cobb unless one of them... If one of them is out, I'll consider playing the other one, but I'm still not sure. They're, they're, they're at a price where I don't have to. Um, This game, the Chiefs have a terrible defense, so if you want to play a Jags wide receiver, I have no problem with it. D.D. Westbrook is by far my favorite. Marvin Jones is down here at 4,700. Um, he's been seeing a fair share of targets, 8, 9, 6, 6. Um... Roughly the same amount of yards every time. You kind of know what you're expecting. You're hoping he probably gets into the to the end zone. Historically, he has killed Green Bay. Um, and so I'm willing to target Marvin Jones at 4,700. Uh, now, he killed them without Kenny Galladay around, but he still killed them nonetheless. Pair of two 4K wide receivers you can take a look at. Taiwan Taylor and Mohamed Sanu. Both fold at 4K. Should have increased roles. I still think Ridley overtakes Sanu, but Sanu is still playing mid 70% to low 80% of snaps. And so he's still the, he's still heavily the wide receiver too. Taylor is kind of boomer bust, but it is Buffalo, so makes the boomer bust a little bit lower. If we come down here at... 3,600, no, where is he? 3,500 is Devontae Parker. Number one wide receiver for the Dolphins. Has only played in one game, had three targets and two grabs. Um, he looks like he should be able to give it a go in this game. And at 3,500 for a receiver as good as Devontae Parker, I'm willing to play him. 3,500 is just way too cheap for Devontae Parker. And so I'll play him. If you want a real off-the-board play, I have to find him. It is Ryan Switzer, 3K. He's been lining up in the backfield and catching balls out of the backfield. He had seven targets and seven receptions last week. 3K for Ryan Switzer, very, very interesting. Um, he's going to get the targets of uh, uh, of James Conner. So I think Ryan Switzer is really interesting at three, the 3K. 
I wish I would have seen it more. They've only done it one game, so I'm not entirely sure what I want to think about that. But he's also a slot wide receiver, but they also have James Washington. So it, it's, it's kind of a, it's probably a pass, but in GPPs, I love me some Ryan Switzer. So we have 7,400 left, as you can see. And so we're going to plug in my favorite wide receiver on the week. My favorite wide receiver in all the NFL is Julio Jones, and we're going to go ahead and plug him in. Then you have to kind of decide for yourself. Do you want Juju Smith-Schuster or do you want um, Adam Thielen? I really like me some Adam Thielen, and so I think I'm going to take Adam Thielen. I think he has a really good game against Philly and what should be a competitive game. He should see targets. Uh, 7700 is not a cheap price for Thielen, but I like it. Um, what you can do here now, I'll say it, um, is you can forego the double running back in cash, or the triple running back. I know it's what we do. You can play. I don't even think. No, you can't play Todd Gurley this week. Can I get in, Melvin? For, no. So we'd have to go CMC. So if we go CMC, we can play Carr or Russ uh, this week. And, you know, that that's one way to go. That's one way to go. Or you can bring TJ Yeldon from the running back slot. Plug him in here, and then go to that flex, and at 7,500 is Juju Smith-Schuster at 7,500. You get more exposure to this Atlanta-Pittsburgh game, and then at quarterback, you got 5,900 remaining, and you can go with Stafford, or you can go with Bortles or Dalton. Um, I probably would go Stafford. I think Stafford's my favorite play in that range, but Stafford, David Johnson, TJ Yeldon, Devontae Parker, Julio Jones, Adam Thielen, Nick Vanette, and Juju Smith-Schuster with the Browns defense. I don't hate this lineup. You have a high volume receivers. Juju averaging what? Okay, well, let's eliminate that 19. We'll just say averaging about 11 targets per game. Um, gone over 103 of them. Would have gone over 100 here if he could have grabbed a couple more balls, but only 4 for 11. Um, Thielen averaging... 13 12 13 targets we'll get rid of the outlying 19 we'll go 12 or 13 targets just absolutely massive games out of adam thielen julio jones outlier six we'll say averaging about 10 10 targets um and i'll i'll, I'll say these are tougher matchups against carolina and new orleans um you get marcus Lattimore here who played fantastic marcus Lattimore defense on julio jones in this game Still, Julio got 96 yards. Carolina was kind of a weird game. Um, that was the... Is that the Calvin... No, that wasn't the Calvin Ridley 3 What? That was just a weird game, wasn't it? That was a Christian McCaffrey 14 catch weird game. I'm throwing that game out. Uh, he still had 9 targets in that game. <laughs> Nonetheless, as weird as that game was, he still had 9 targets. Um, you just have an insane floor, and you have a elite receiver in Devontae Parker at 3,500. If he gives it a go this weekend, I absolutely love this lineup. Um, I had worked on lineups earlier in the week, and I didn't like them, and they were kind of iffy, and they were kind of whatever, and I didn't, I just didn't like them that much. And so now, though, after looking at this and building this lineup out here, man, I love this lineup. I hope a little bit more value opens up. Maybe we can get another cheap running back, um, step down from Stafford maybe, and we can get, we maybe maybe we won't have to risk Devontae Parker, and we can go Julio, Thielen, Juju in the wide receiver spots, and like David Johnson, TJ Yeldon, is, is there a really cheap running back? We need him to be like 4K. Chris Carson, we could go with a Chris Carson over Devontae Parker. Uh, we'd have to step down from Stafford, but we could make that work. Royce Freeman... I don't think I play Aaron Jones, but he's an option. But, uh, yeah, that is going to do it for the first look, guys. Absolutely in love with um, the builds this week. Probably won't go with this exact build. I am team jamming those running backs, uh, and so I'd probably... I think jamming the running backs is taking Julio out and playing um, MG3. Um, I think that's probably the team jam it in, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking this lineup here, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys in the next breakdown video. Um, should have the Thursday night breakdown video up soon. Peace out.